Why are you guys sending me clips of Eva? Why is Eva talking to Prime K's? Screw DGG chat YouTube chat all oh, the way. Oh god, she's like integrating herself into these communities. <laughs> that I I I uh wanted to sort of push back on what Catherine said because it's absolutely not true that promiscuity is like not uh, increasing your risk just like um for contracting HIV or AIDS because that's just not true. Like it's correlated. The more sexual partners you have, the higher your risk is. Like I'm not saying that they're not correlated. I'm saying they're not necessarily causative, and you can change the rate. Like you can change your behaviors and how you are promiscuous to no, be safer. No, is a risk. And I what? don't think that's really dangerous to condone so, that it could be okay to be promiscuous at all. So, wait, are you actually anti-sex? You don't think anyone should have sex because they might get an STD? I don't think I said I'm anti-sex. I think well, I was... So Eva. Such a hard time understanding the implications of what she's saying. Um, something that I've talked about a lot before. I haven't talked about this a lot. We should read or listen. There's got to be more work done on this. There's a whole field of fucking, like, language. Um... And every time I ask what this is, someone will say it's it's not like applied linguistics. I don't know. There's some name for it. I made Brit Bonga weeb here. Am I okay? When when you any sentence that you utter, like um, it like you'll say like this many words, but it will mean like so many different things. Like you you like this will be like one statement you make, but it implies this, it implies this, it implies this, it implies this, it implies this. like. Everything that we say has so many implications about it, but generally in, in human conversation, semiotics, is that it? Usually in human conversation, we kind of understand like, oh yeah, this is what I mean. This is one of the reasons why it's so fucking stupid when, when, um, when, when, when you ask like, can I use the bathroom? And a teacher's like, well, yeah, you can. And like, wait a second. Don't you mean to ask, may I use the bathroom? It's like, okay, you stupid fuck. You know what I'm asking. When I say, can I use the bathroom, right? The, the full sentence, the implication is what I'm saying is like, do I have your permission to temporarily leave the class, to go into a bathroom adjacent to the hall, to relieve myself, wash my hands, and come back into the classroom afterwards without getting in trouble or without having any kind of repercussion for my actions? Like, this is like the full, but you don't have to say most of that, right? Be, be, you, you usually you just utter a few words and we kind of understand the implications, right? Because you could literally, it's funny because you, like <clears throat> you can literally ask the same thing like, oh, may I use the restroom? She's like, yeah, you may. But they could also say like, well, I don't know, may you? Are you asking me if you can use the restroom right now? Are you asking me if you can use the restroom right now across the hallway? Are you asking me if you can use the restroom right now across the hallway and come back to the class without getting in trouble? Are, like you could run that down infinitely. I don't know, like, um, yeah. But like, a lot of these things are, 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 a lot of these things are, a lot of the language that we use just as, as humans, just the way that we talk, there are so many implications behind every single sentence, right? Um, and, and, and you see this every day, right? Girlfriend, boyfriend, or whoever comes up to you, it's like, hey, are you hungry? And you're like, yeah. Uh, okay, wait, well, yeah, what? Like, well, usually if somebody says, yeah, you're just like, Much yeah, we should go get something to eat, right? Or, or, even though we disagree on most things. I have not been following long, but you seem pretty reasonable. Like, typically when you, when you, when you have a conversation like this, there's a lot that's implied. Like, hey, or like, hey, do you want to go get something to eat? Yeah, I do. And then you just sit here, and it's like, they'll come back like five minutes later. Are we going to go get something to eat? It's like, oh, I don't know. Do you want to go get something to eat? It's like, well, I asked you if you wanted to get something to eat. It's like, oh, yeah, I said I wanted to. I didn't say I was going to. I didn't say I was going to with you. I didn't say I was going to now. I, like... Wait, what? Nobody talks like this. What do you mean? Why are you fucking with me? It's like, and technically what they're saying is true. Well, I guess they didn't actually say they were going right now. They didn't say they were going with me. They didn't say they were going to at all. They just said that they wanted to eat. Maybe it was just like a passing feeling. They, like, but usually when we talk, there's a whole lot of underlying implications that are going on. So when somebody comes out, so when Eva is, so it's, with the mismatch here, what's happening. It's correlated. The more so Eva. A statement here is absolutely true. More like sexual higher, activity is, like is, of course, associated with um, higher risk of transmission of certain uh, sexually transmitted infections. That's just fa a fact, of course. Um, what Catherine is countering with here is like, okay, sure, but you aren't there behaviors that? that we can like encourage to minimize the risk of that transmission? So for instance, uh, maybe you can have additional sexual partners, but maybe you can wear protection or maybe you can get tested or have a more responsible sexual environment that's conducive to not transmitting diseases is what Catherine's coming back. The problem is they're having a mismatch on claims, right? So again, I talk about this a lot and I'll just refresh you for, for people on stream because everybody fucks this up. This is like everybody fucks this up, okay? When we describe a state of affairs, when we describe like how the world is, right? We're talking about a descriptive claim. So cars are blue, um, you know, people tend to have two legs, um, somebody's an asshole, right? These are like descriptive claims, all right? Usually when we're talking in the realm of policy, 
or, or we're telling people to do things, we're working in the realm of prescriptive claims, we're working in prescriptions. So a prescription is like something ought to be done, right? Or like a moral claim is a type of prescriptive claim. You know, it would be good, it would be morally righteous to do this thing. So a, a prescriptive claim might be, you should go to work, you should wake up in the morning, um, you should do blah, 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 right? So the problem here is, Catherine is having a discussion on the prescriptive level where she's saying like, well, hold on. Are you saying that we ought not to have sex? Are you saying that we ought not to um, engage in this behavior? Are you saying that people that do this are wrong or bad, right? She's arguing on the prescriptive and moral level, which is reasonable because if somebody starts coming out and they're saying like, oh, if you have multiple partners, much greater risk of transmission disease. We need to make people aware, blah, blah, blah. Now, even though those are just descriptions, Usually when humans give descriptive claims, there's an implied prescription behind it. So for an example of this, let's say I see somebody outside and I go, hey, if you play on that railing, you're gonna fall and hurt yourself. Those are just two descriptive claims. However, if a parent were to say that to a child, you're gonna get hurt if you don't get down from there. You're gonna get hurt, right? I'm gonna get hurt? Okay, cool. Well, no, usually what, saying, what, usually what the, the full implied text is, you're going to get hurt, therefore you should get down from there to avoid getting hurt, right? Um, you're going to hurt your sister's feelings. Therefore, you should not do that action. You're going to be late for school, right? If your mom came into your room, it's like, you're going to be late for school. It's like, okay. Well, that's not all she's saying. There's a prescription behind that. You're going to be late for school, so you should get out of bed and get ready for school so that you're not late, right? So when somebody hears somebody like Eva, Eva, Eva. has such a huge problem with this, she has so much of a problem with this. When Eva, Eva says something like, um, increased sexual partners increases your risk of having health problems, of getting STDs or STIs, Usually what people hear behind that is, therefore, you should not have an increase in sexual partners. That's the implied prescription. But for whatever reason, I don't know if it is a, um, just a genuine lack of social awareness. I, 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 don't, I don't know what the... Ooh, fuck, I thought I was too loud. I don't know what the problem is, but um, she, just, she absolutely just cannot understand how she can make these descriptive claims. And she's like, wait, well, why are you getting this descriptive claim from it? She just has no idea. Which is, and that I imagine for the rest of this clip, it's three and a half minutes, it's probably the mismatch Genuine we're going to see. Genuine question. Here. What? Is this something that autistic people struggle with? Or um, is this like yeah, a so my understanding thing? is that um, one of the big problems, so we used to call this Asperger's, but one of the hallmarks of autistic people, um, as far as I'm aware, I could be wrong in this, but, but a hallmark of ASD is you have a lot of trouble conceptualizing what other minds know. So like a severely autistic person, um, I, fuck, somebody can me if I'm wrong, but I think like a test is like, you might look at something like a red ball and then you put it underneath a box. And then mm -hmm. another person will come into the room and the autistic person will think, okay, well they should know there's a red thing under the box because I know it. They have like a hard time conceptualizing like thoughts and other minds. That's what like a really extreme example. Others kind of, yeah. yeah. Or like in general, like autistic people, I used to work with an autistic girl on night shift on um, at the casino. Autistic people can have a very, very hard time understanding um, how other people are feeling. It's one of the reasons why sometimes autistic people will ramble or tell inappropriate jokes or talk a lot or have a hard time like relating people is because they don't have a very good understanding sometimes of the internal thoughts of other people. It can be very hard for them to um, understand that intuitively. They have to like spend a lot more effort and time working on it. Um, is it like a, this didn't offend me so it shouldn't offend you type of um, not? Like, it's not uh, necessarily like, because when you say it that way, it sounds more mm -hmm. selfish. It's not oh, I'm more, not trying to make it sound selfish, uh -huh. but yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's more just like, um, yeah, it's just more like I think a general problem. Like, and this is just one facet of ASD. ASD can encompass a lot of different types right. of behaviors. But one facet of ASD is that, like, you, you can have a hard time, I think, understanding, like, how other people are thinking or how they consider yeah. you or other things. Yeah. Okay. Quick question what? on top of Moot's question. Uh, when we first spoke, I thought that she was doing all this because she was a uh, clout sharking a little bit. Have you changed your mind now that she's going on all the shows you used to go on and climbing her way up the corporate ladder of streaming or do you stick to the fact that she is... I don't think she's like a clout shark or she could be one problem that I have with a lot of people is when I try to think of what somebody is I try to think I, I notice this actually she might be um, when I try to think of what somebody is I notice that I project a lot of my own behaviors onto that person and I assume that they must not be that particular thing because they're not doing the things that I would do so for instance like if I was a clout chaser and I was a girl I would fuck my way up streamer ladders instantly without even a second thought because that would be the easiest way to climb but she doesn't do stuff like that so I would assume like okay well if you're trying to clout chase you're doing it really poorly so you must not be doing 
doing it, but it might just be that people are bad at it. I did the same thing with Fed as well. When Fed released his first document, um, like some people were like, well, maybe Fed is like trying to manipulate the situation. And it's like, I don't think Fed would do that because there are way better ways to do it. And he wouldn't release text that are so obviously like disproven with one or if two more pictures. Words, yeah, yeah, there's no way that would be so dumb. But then when Pokey released her thing, and then when I talked extensively with Pokey, um, Fed like fucked up a lot in that. And it's like, wait, why the fuck would you do that? So I, maybe sometimes I have an error where I assume that people are too um, efficient or too Machiavellian or too um, adept at what they're trying to do. So I guess it's possible maybe that she does try to cloud chase. She's just really, really bad at it. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I, it's hard to tell the difference between incompetency versus a lack of desire. How do you feel that she's uh, integrating herself into your world a little bit? You're looking forward to doing some political podcasts with her? I, I don't care. I can interact with her anywhere. I don't. I don't. It doesn't bother me at all. Wait, is she still messaging you to this day? Um, she hasn't in a few days, but. I'm not saying that they're not correlated. I'm saying they're not necessarily causative. And oh, so to bring this back, so Catherine is trying to argue on the prescriptive level, saying like, well, hold on, are you saying that people should or shouldn't have, you know, promiscuous sex? Are you saying that people shouldn't do that? And Catherine's not understanding, right, which is fair, because I wouldn't expect anybody to. Catherine's understanding that Eva has no fucking idea what her implied prescriptive claim is, because Eva thinks she's just making observations. I'm just observing. I'm just making remarks. You can change the rate. Like you can change your behaviors and how you are promiscuous. So you notice when Catherine's talking about changing behaviors, she's talking about like, well, what should we do? What ought we do? Like she's making, she's in the realm of the prescriptive right now. Being promiscuous safer. is a risk. And I don't think that's really dangerous to condone so, it because it's okay to be promiscuous at all. So wait, are you actually anti-sex? You don't think anyone should have sex because they might get an STD? I don't think I said I'm anti-sex. And now she pulls like, this is the classic Jordan Peterson. This is the classic Jordan Peterson. Because Catherine, who I'm assuming... Why shouldn't you use autistic stuff really? I'm assuming Catherine like has decent social skills because she's reading this as any normal human being would, would read this. Eva is saying like, you should not be talking about like, you know, promiscuous sex is okay, blah, blah, blah. You are going to increase the risk. So Catherine is hearing like, oh, you're saying that we shouldn't. So then Catherine rightfully asks, and so many people stumble into this Peterson trap. Um, and Catherine is asking, well, hold on. Are you against like casual sex? And Eva pulls the classic Peterson retort of, well, hold on. I never said that. Now, did I? Now, technically, Eva. that's correct. She never did say you should be against this. But any reasonable human listening to her statements when she's not giving a prescriptive claim is probably going to fill that in. Like, oh, well, she probably thinks we shouldn't have sex. So now Catherine is going to fight with an argument that Eva. never made. And then Eva. it is technically going to be correct. But like socially, it's just like so disconnected from how most people read these. Destiny doesn't have the slightest understanding of Jordan Peterson. You're making a straw man of Peterson. Nope, we've watched plenty of Peterson videos on stream before. It's great if you're a massive Peterson fanboy. Um, the, if you want to see Peterson do this in real time, my favorite one is him talking to the uh, Asian kid about like women's place in the workplace. He'll do this relentlessly. Well, women have a lot of problems integrating in the workplace. Women cause a lot of trouble, blah, 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 blah. Women, blah, 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 blah. You know, we don't know what the rules are. And the guy's like, well, do you think that women shouldn't be in the workplace? And he's like, I never said that. It's like, okay, well, what are you saying? Well, like, what? What if he's just pointing to a um, to a situation? He's not saying no, women shouldn't be, but this situation does exist. Sure, like, but the problem the... is like we don't need popular figures to give us description. We need prescriptions. We need you to tell us what to do. It's not enough to just say like, "Hey, this is a problem." Like, okay, well, how do we fix it? Right? Especially when you're in an influential position. Especially when you know that people are going to make their own prescriptions if you don't actually give them. Okay, but um, okay. I think well, I was so, no, 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 no. The logic of your argument I think it's anti -prom to the Are you anti-promiscuity? Yeah, so having sex with one person, like that is some amount of promiscuity, right? Like that puts you at risk. No, that's not usually what's considered to be promiscuous. Um, okay. Well, that depends on who you talk to, right? If... Um, so I guess I'm talking about having more sexual partners than what is the statistical average. So, so are you against people having more than one sexual partner? I'm, I'm just talking about the research. Like, oh, okay. She backs into this research. again, like, oh. I'm just talking about the research. I'm just making descriptive claims. I think, okay. I mean, I, I think Eva, I'm just, confused. I think Eva. what you're trying to say is that like this is a risk factor, and you don't want anyone yeah. to walk away thinking it's not a risk factor. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Really yeah. Thinking... Okay. So Prime K is coming in with the understanding, and I think even if he doesn't have like I don't know what his background is, but even if he doesn't have like the 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 um, vocabulary to describe exactly what's going on, intuitively he understands where the disconnect is. Oh, Eva. you're just saying this thing, right? So he's here to broker between these two, which is positive. Yeah. But and you're not passing, if, as far as I understand, you're not passing a moral judgment on a person who, who does engage. Not passing a moral judgment. You're not making a prescription. You're just making an observation. Yeah. And promiscuity. But like, are you? No. Okay, great. So, yeah. 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 Okay. That's, yeah. that's good to clarify that. I mean, I would, my point. Behavior. I'm still against the behavior, but I mean, 
like just personally. I mean, also. <laughs> okay, but then Ava fucks up by giving a personal opinion on something. It, it, oh, dude, this is the most Weasley way to say something. Okay, the research says this, and I personally don't like this, but I didn't say don't do it. It's like the ultimate, like trying to have like all of the cake and eat all of the cake as well. Yeah, this is the Hassan argument. Oh yeah, when I tried to argue with him about, like, do you think you should say bad words in private? And he's like, well, personally, I wouldn't do it. It's like that's not what I'm asking. I'm not asking you what you. Per do you think you should call the cops if somebody's walking down an alley and they're gonna rob you? Well, personally, I wouldn't call the cops. I'm like, I don't care what you personally do. I'm not asking what you personally do. I'm asking what you think people should do. Um, yeah. So you are against promiscuity. Yeah, but that's like, on a personal person. level. You don't like promiscuous people. No, I think, well, no, no, I didn't say I don't like promiscuous people. You're putting words in my mouth. I said I don't like so behavior. Don't like the behavior. The behavior and the person are completely different, you know? Like, you can just like a behavior. So, Eva. Like, again with the descriptions. Oh, fuck, it's so interesting. Watch this from a third-person perspective, because now nobody can accuse me of being biased. She does, she totally just does not understand how um, the implications of a lot of what she says. So, Eva she legitimately thinks that she could go up to somebody and say, like, hey, just so you know, um, when you do this, it's narcissistic. When you do this, it's promiscuous. When you do this, you elevate your risk factors for that, that, and that. And most normal humans will hear that and be like, holy shit, why do you fucking hate me so much? And they'd be like, whoa, what? I didn't say that I hate you. And then she would repeat the line, behaviors and people are two totally separate things. Well, most people don't view it that way. Most people are, are pretty essentialist when it comes to like behaviors. Most people identify people as being the summation of their behaviors. Now that these are distinctly separate things. Behavior. Sure. I mean, I don't like drugs either, but I mean, I don't dislike people who do drugs. Exactly. There we go. Yeah, like, we go. I, it's, a, it's, a, it's an issue of other people exist and other people do things and I decide what I let into my life. That's all it is. Right, exactly. That's, that's all. That's yeah. all. I mean, I'm just being open. Like, yeah, of course. Yeah. Like, it's, it's still like, I, I'm just like disclosing that. Like, yeah, I still personally don't, like, I don't agree with it. But yeah, I'm not passing judgment on like other people. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, yeah. I, I don't drink myself, but I don't pass judgment on everyone else in the plan who does drink. Um, so I, I understand what you're saying. Seriously, how are your actions removed from you? What I'm saying is there's a difference between being and get so... We say this differently linguistically, but these also occupy different places in our mind. There's a difference between thinking that somebody's behavior is abusive versus thinking that somebody is abusive. There's a difference between somebody believing that um, somebody can act like an asshole versus somebody is an asshole. Um, linguistically, the difference is minor, but in our head, these things are very, very, very different. People that we have favorable views of, we tend to view their behavior and their character somewhat separately if it's a negative behavior. And people that we have negative views of, their behavior becomes an essential component of who they are. So rather than saying, that like this person makes mistakes sometimes people are like this person is a mistake this person is this is like an essential part of the character yeah yeah and, and i wanted to say like yeah Anna's absolutely correct it is a risk factor to be more promiscuous than less promiscuous but it's also something that you can manage and you have to know that it's a risk factor to manage your risk factors steven what click the link i sent you oh, on discord what? okay I had a debate with a big streamer and it was, I'm not saying the name obviously, but um, it, uh, oh my God, that was the worst ever. <laughs> and I still get fucking harassed for that shit. And like, it was just like constant questioning, like everything I said of like, I'm just like, no, she's wrong on that. No, she doesn't know what she's talking about. No, that's wrong. And, like, oh my God, like so many comments. And I'm just like sitting there like, wait, are you really going to try and like explain to me narcissism? What? What? <laughs> it was so strange. Oh God, that was like the wildest thing ever. But that was like um, a pretty toxic mm -hmm. community. That's like, the worst experience. But yeah, it was just a lot of questioning of like all my knowledge. And it was really weird because it's like, I don't know, it's just strange to me because it's like, I mean, you would expect someone, I think, in their master's program to like know these things, and and it's just odd when people who like, are, I don't know, they, just, it's just, and it was like it was it was mostly men, absolutely, but yeah. I think you and I have a shared experience with. Oh, so you know what I'm referring to? Okay. <laughs> yes, yes. You and I have a shared experience with a certain larger streamer. <laughs> oh, they were the Navy person who was saying there were no differences between men and women on a biological level. That might have been, man, dude. That whole debate brought out the worst of the worst in terms of argumentation. Holy fuck. A professional in the United States Navy for five years. How how are you going to make a claim that lung capacity between men and women is different and actually unironically make that and legitimately believe it's a thing? So we you don't think so you don't think there's a difference? <laughs> why why it's just so easy to look this up. Why wouldn't you just look this up? This is a this is an old podcast. It's an average O2 capacity between a male and a female as a, as a medical technician or whatever in the Navy. You don't believe that's true? United States Navy Hospital Corpsman for five years and okay. no. We never got taught about it. So, you know, the I mean, entirety of the time that I spent in training, the entirety of the time that I spent at Naval Medical Center Portsmouth, the entirety of the time I spent at Naval Medical Center Great Lakes, none of my instructors... You wouldn't get taught did. about that, by the way, for that job. Sure, you might not. Um, so, I don't, But I don't know why they would cite their job as a thing. And it's just like... It's so dumb, right? The average gender difference in aerobic capacity is measured by VO2 max. The maximal oxygen intake has been reported earlier. Average female value, VO2, it's about 70-75% of that male after puberty. Like, it's just like, 
But this isn't even like a controversial claim. Like, Jesus. No. Yeah. But I, I more meant just like as a corpsman, them bringing it up was stupid because. Oh, sure. Like yeah. You don't think there's a difference in average O2 capacity between a mill and. None of my instructors ever brought it up. It was never brought up in our independent learning environments. Okay, well, here's a quick comment study that I found in Clueless. Don't you think it would be really good to read about this stuff before engaging these conversations? Don't you think it's really irresponsible that you come off as a pretty clueless about it when you're paying me to be the transphobic one? It's really easy to find information about this kind of stuff. Don't you think that it would be better for you to know about this before engaging in these types of conversations? So you're calling me stupid? Essentially, yeah. Okay. But more than that, like, pretty dangerous, right? Like, you give me, you give me one thing, medical professional in the United States. I don't like, I hate how when sometimes, or I guess it, it's funny, I guess, people will be like, so are you saying that I'm dumb? Like, yeah? <laughs> Am I supposed to shy away from that? I don't understand if that's supposed to be like some rhetorical own or, I don't know why people do this. Man, oh, Jesus Christ! My Holy shit, these toddlers up on my dick, man. I, I mean, I, I mean. Moody cakes. What's up, Hello, friend. Do? You think they Dude, call for why do they not want people to vote? Me? Isn't this insane? It's only Republicans watching this. What am I missing? You're literally I fucking Trump. I don't know. I guess... There are songs on both sides of the aisle, huh? <laughs> oh shit, you're right. Wait a minute. These are their Bernie Sanders. No, no, These no, no, no. These are the no, Bernie no. Busters. Wait, wait, wait. Bernie Sanders is unironically like praxy, okay? That guy will do what needs to be done to make sure that you maintain some level of power um, governmentally. Bernie Sanders never- Okay, not Bernie. These yeah. are the Bernie or Buster. Buster. Yes, 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 yes. That's more apt, yeah, sure. Maybe it's time, maybe it's time Praxis, so not praxis. Beyond sorry. the Democrats and the Republicans. Maybe it's time for there to be a party of the people. Look to Maybe YouTube there's time watching for you it for to be a party cheers. of American patriots. Because I see American patriots everywhere. And American patriots love America. We're not going to be taken over by the Chinese. If you take the China money, go to China. Don't stuff your pockets with Chinese money when we buy Dominion or you, you buy the COVID equipment from the people that sent the virus over here. You don't buy bullets from the enemy. Tell that to Brian Kemp, because that's what he did. Now, Sidney Powell and I want to try to answer your questions. That's a Sidney Powell. How about... How about Sidney Powell and Mike Flynn in 2024? He'll fight for America because he'll fight like a friend. Michael Flynn's pretty young, only 61 years old. I told you I'm not partisan. <laughs> Vernon Jones for governor. Brian will fight like a friend. How about some good, solid, hard-working American patriot out of the crowd of people I see here today? Run for governor. Take back your state. I support Donald Trump because he loves the people. I spoke with him the other day, call me. I want you to know one thing that he told me. He knows he won this election. He said, if I lost this election fair and square, I would concede. But he said, Lynn, I didn't lose it. I won it. And he said to me, with the conviction of the President of the United States of America, I will never concede. Don't you ever concede, Mr. President. You won this election. America voted for you. Stay in the White House. I'm not here. When you get out front like this, sometimes people say you're trying to you make money. You can't be a Christian and be pro-choice at the same time, at least without God's some sort of cognitive dissonance. 
but I will tell you to support my foundation, hashtag fight back. I formed it five months ago to defend and preserve and protect the Constitution and our rights. And I'm going to do it. You don't have to vote for me. You don't have to give me any money, but go to hashtag fightback.law, fightback.law, and look at what we're trying to do and help us. Oh shit, I now just I realized this is the guy that filed the lawsuit where he I mixed up Michigan votes old. with Minnesota counties. Yeah. We'll tell this story first. Political that subcultures are bound to split into competing subcultures denying their siblings the interpretive sovereignty for the poor self-destruct. You can't blame people for being concerned about being replaced and watching their culture and values be ignored. There is an attack on normalcy. Dude, nothing is being replaced and your culture and values are being a culture and everything changes over time. This is some new shit sold to you by dumb fucks that are trying to make money on fucking Patreon, okay? Cultures and, and peoples and all of that shit have always changed and moved and evolved and migrated and had others come in and others go out over time. It's the natural evolution of human history. There has never in the entirety of human history been some culture that's been able to take a snapshot of themselves and freeze themselves in place and not change and resist the change of time. It's just how it goes. Learn to live with it. Fuck off. Don't be so fragile. Can you do a Republican perch now? Your YouTube chat is a disaster. Okay, listen, hold on. Oh, God, I hate talking to all of you so much. Listen, moving a culture in a certain chat room takes a lot of fucking time, okay? I can't just open a new chat or a new community on another service and expect them to instantly, like, emulate or mirror every other community that I have. Okay? Shit takes time. I'm not just gonna go through and start fucking perma-banning every fucking person that says something that hurts your feelings or that ends up being, like, fucked up or whatever just because a new community that I've, like, opened isn't, like, immediately matching a prior one, alright? Go take that to my fucking Discord mods or whatever. Those guys will perma-ban anybody, I think, based on what they say. Okay? Listen, that's not how we run things here, alright? If I see super fucked up shit in YouTube chat, we have more mods now, we'll ban it there, okay? But I'm not just gonna blanket ban everybody in a certain community because they don't match. Like, believe it or not, regardless of the crazy, dumb fucking shit you hear on Twitter, my my chat room on DGG and even my Twitch chat is pretty unbelievably like accepting compared to any other fucking large Twitch chat on this fucking website. Okay. There is no other Twitch streamer that has a more accepting community than mine. Garen fucking teeth. That is of my size. There might be smaller content creators. They do. Okay. It takes time to, 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 to move things in certain directions. Okay. Calm the fuck down. Stop crying and bitching about like a, a chat that you don't even participate in. All right. Fuck off. Or if you don't like it, go be, go be a community member there. Get on the ground, do some work. Just move communities. Destiny, no one said it's supposed to be instant like DGG, and no one said banning. I mean, be critical enough to make it clear that you don't agree with them because they seem to think you do currently. What are you talking about? What, I, I literally fight against so many. What do you mean? It's like a little running meme in my community that, like, the most conservative people that watch right now are in fucking YouTube chat. Like, what are you? You're, you're insane, dude. Point of order. The answer that I gave you is they didn't bother to interview a single witness. Just like you, they don't want to know the truth. So in your analysis, you talked about how the number of votes coming in were at a rate higher than they could actually be processed through the machines. Correct. And this is after the polls have closed? Um, this, yes, sir. This is... Um... So, so forgive my ignorance here, but the way I understood it is that the numbers don't get counted one by one. A precinct will count all their ballots, and then they submit all their numbers. So the fact that there's a lot of numbers coming in within a short period of time isn't because a bunch of ballots all of a sudden get counted. It's because machines from all over the state that had been counting for hours all day long uh -oh. finally decided to upload their information. I, 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 am I missing something here? That's uh -oh. how I always understood how these things work is, you know, I live in the city of Wayland. I go, I vote. Mm -hmm. They, you know, I think, what, 7 to 8 o'clock, they shut down. They do everything, and then they upload it. They didn't all of a sudden run through 1,000 votes. No, those 1,000 votes were counted over hours and hours. So the, the timeline of the reporting, which, which is, is um, it, it's, it's got timestamps on the data files, the data logs, where it's upgraded, uploaded. Those show four spikes that totaled 384,000 uh -oh. votes uh, in a combined interval of two hours and 38 minutes. So but those, those were already said not possible because they're not running 300,000 ballots through that quickly. That's just correct. the uploaded data. The state. So if you oh. have the city of Detroit with 250,000, obviously Detroit came in later. But hypothetically, there's big cities in Michigan, big precincts, 
and they start filing at the same time, it seems to me like that's actually quite logical that you would have a lot coming in in a short amount of time. As as someone so, who's a political candidate, as I watch the numbers in come in, usually there's nothing, 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 and then all of a sudden you get a bunch of spikes. Oh, we got city of Cantwood. Oh, we got Gaines Township. You start seeing th things come in. I don't think that's proof of of fraud or anything. I think that's just how it works. Am I missing something here? So if you look at the total number of machines, and the machines can count about 2,000. Oh, he has no answer. He's just going to keep repeating the same argument ad nauseum, but he realizes he got caught. Oh, no. 1,000 ballots per hour per machine. Um, the the just... calculation sum would yield about you know 100,000 ballots as a maximum number of ballots that could be processed. But they're not Tabulation. processing that ballot. They're reporting the it. They've been processing those ballots all day long. They are just uploading the total number at that time. Well, they're they're actually uploaded at various intervals along that that timeline throughout the day. They, wait, so say, you, wait, say that again. They're they're uploading those results at various, you know, across that timeline throughout the day. I don't so, think I don't think that's accurate. I, I don't think they upload results until after everything is done. I mean, that, that's actually a pretty big deal with Republican, at least. We actually have been very clear of, you don't start reporting the ballots until everything is done, everything is closed out. So I don't think that's actually accurate. If that is accurate, that's something we need to look into, that they're continuously uploading the numbers throughout the day. But that's not my understanding. Yeah, so if, if you look at the, the Edison data um, provided to the New York Times, it shows a, a pretty much of a, a continual upload throughout the day. And then there are spikes that occur at specific times that are bump loads, but I can provide this to you. The, the question is, did you give us that? As I know you gave us a packet, that's not in it. It, it should be in the, the affidavit that okay. I, I uh, provided we don't have that. to you, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Uh, did he answer your question? Okay. Um, next, uh, we'll go to Representative Camilleri. I'll pass, thank you. Thank you. Wait, so we, we don't get to All drill right. on that a little bit uh, more? Representative Lefebvre. <laughs> Man, something that people used to say a lot is like, I wonder if the internet is like going to change substantially in the future. And we're kind of like, we don't realize it how sick the internet is now because it's going to be like regulated or like way different in the future. I think we already passed through one of those ages when I think about it. <laughs> we're kind of like in the second age of the internet. I don't know if I call it like the age of social media, but it, there's definitely a different feeling. The internet is way more connected to real life now than it was back in the day. When do you think that we entered the new age? Um, I would definitely say it was ushered in by Facebook for sure. Uh, I don't know when that exact timeline would have been, but it would have been sometime when Facebook started to branch out more. Maybe that age can be marked by when Facebook went from being invite only to public access. How would you describe like the older age? The first age? Um, the, it's just crazy. It was like dreams and nightmares and, um, I don't know, like think back to like the stories you hear of like the, the like people moving west in the United States. Like there were people that would go searching for gold, searching for treasure, people that would just find like massive land to be farmed on, people that were killing each other over shit, just like um. Remember to hit that like and subscribe and don't forget the notification bell so that my videos show up right in your feed. We no longer hate weebs here, okay? We replaced weebs with Brit Bongers.